Welcome back to Gin Reviews of Middle Tennessee. Tonight's the night we open up this little bastard, this tall bastard right here, a filibuster dual cask, finished in American and French oak barrels. Gin. That's a mouthful, huh? Anyway, here's the bottle. You can see there's a there's a slight tinge of barrel aging here. It looks almost like it was in a sherry barrel, but I haven't been able to find any of that information on what barrels they actually use, except for it's oak, so, you know, oak, the strongest of the woods. Okay, so, we're coming in at 45% right here, uh, made in uh, Virginia, sorry, Virginia. Um, the style is an aged uh, barrel, barrel aged, like we said, and the base spirit is grain. The botanicals known are holly basil. I like this. I'm sorry, holy basil. Holy basil? I don't know now. Holly basil I kind of like, but holy basil. <laughs> holy basil. Juniper, lemon verbena, lemon verbena, and rosemary. All right, so there's not that many in there. Juniper, of course. You have to have juniper, you know, for a gin. <laughs> Um, what I have on this is, uh, the distillery, it has an established reputation for their excellent bourbon gin rise. It seems unsurprising that, uh, when filibuster distillery first foray, first foray into the world, the gin would be a barrel aged offering. The dual cast gin is rested in both French and American oak barrels. Additionally, our additional herbal botanicals are infused during the second resting phase, making it somewhat unusual among aged gins, as a uh, filibuster here does cask gin in a combination bathtub gin, uh, aged gin. And like I said, it has that light straw color, and it's, uh, we're gonna get right to the old opening of this, because I am thirsty tonight. Why do they put them on and, and I can't open it up? <laughs> Stop waiting, Joe. Alright. Well, look, that one actually wasn't that bad. And, hey, it is a cork. There's a cork here, huh? It's been a while since I haven't had a cork, huh? Alright, let's see what the noise it makes here. Wait a minute. Before I pop it open, I just had to, I gotta, I gotta do this. What started in our nation's capital <laughs> led us to the deep limestone well in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley, where we discovered the perfect water for making exceptional liquors. All right, that's just a little of the blurb on the back. It goes on and on and on. If you want to read it, go ahead and buy a bottle and uh, do yourself a favor. Let's do this, though. Oh, all right. That was a little unexpected, huh? I was thinking it was going to be a little bit more like poppity pop pop. Ooh, this ring around the bottle top here. Oh, see? Drives me crazy. Alright, let's see here. Let's do just this guy tonight. Just because. Ooh, gotta love that glug glug. Alright, so. All right, well, I mean, it definitely has citrus in it. I smell a lot of citrus, a little bit of smoke in the background. But the botanicals are very light. They're very muted. Yeah, I smell orange rind, maybe cinnamon, melissa, and light oak. Ooh, I like this. The corianders, there's a phantom coriander uh, just on the nose. Very light on the juniper, though. Alright, let's try it. It's a burn, for sure. It's definitely 45%. I mean, it, ooh, it's traveling now. Beautiful. It's it's very dry. I could see this in a in a martini right away. Um, ooh. 
you know, there's a bit of like a, a Pinot Gris going on here. Mm. The citrus is definitely dominant. Uh, the juniper, I barely, barely can taste. I mean, it's not juniper four, so, and I mean, that's one of the reasons why gin heads are gin heads. I mean, you're going to want to go after the juniper ones more so than the contemporary. So, if you're not a huge uh, juniper person and you think that gin is like pine salt, I hate that, by the way, but if you do, this might be a, a, a gin to ease in. Um, batch number th three <laughs> and bottle number 2500 it's not bad it's really not bad we're gonna have to try it in the old uh, GMT here I mean the secondary infusion is kind of cool I haven't I haven't heard of that well I have actually um, a couple of the ones on the back shelf there have done that uh but it's cool that it, like they let this gin rest in a barrel i mean just to get that that light straw it's not heavily perfumed with smoke and uh but there is like a, a like a tannic note um it might some people might not like that it, it it's it's a little high in the tannic area with the tannins and all that It's not bad neat though. I mean, it is strong as hell, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I definitely got a huge burn out of that out of that uh, shot. Well, tonight I'm gonna take out of retirement the old uh, goblet of destiny here because because it's a good song. All right, let's see. Let's do another. Uh, Shatterinsky here of the filibuster. So another reason why I'm doing the filibuster uh, from the Shenandoah Valley is because uh, that's going on right now. New share with the old uh, cocaine Mitch. <laughs> I always think that's funny. I mean, come on, that dude. Look at that. Beautiful. You know what? I think I'm gonna go a little bit heavier though. On the uh, Jinski here, because yeah, I usually like about a shot and a half. I mean, if I was gonna do it accurately, I'd say it would be about I don't know two ounces. Yeah, this guy here is up to two ounces on the top, so I would say that that's a usual, the huge for me. I mean, look at this now. Gotta love that noise so the gin. And of course we're gonna do like always a uh, fever tree. And the old magic hat bottle opener. I think I've talked about the magic hat bottle opener before. I used to drink about, oh I don't know, fifty-six gallons of magic hat a month in a place down in Florida where they didn't sell it. So I used to have it shift from friends who took the drive down uh, to Florida from Vermont which where it's made or New York uh, sold and if I had told this story I'm um, forgive me because it's I love it anyway so every bottle cap you know you'd open up on the magic hat there'd be like a little saying inside that would say like peace or cheers or whatever you know someone put it something online and then <laughs> magic cat put it on the bottle cap anyway one day i popped open a magic cat i can't remember what time of day this was but it said you're a winner and i got was like oh my god what did i win because i drank so much of this stuff it's about time to give me something back right well they sent me this uh you know cry guy here which i still use to this day and a pack of coasters which i've never opened <laughs> <laughs> so that story was once again rehashed and I'm sure it's just as interesting as the first time or third time alright let's try this here without any of the citrus first because it's very citrus forward mm. 
Okay. You know, it's not bad. It definitely needs citrus. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but honestly, I don't see this gin more as a uh, gin and tonic type of gin. I see this more as a cocktail gin right away. Like I said before, the uh, martini, a really dry martini, maybe with some olive, a dirty martini. Yeah. Even the, even the Martinez would be good with this too. A little sweet vermouth mixed into this. And then chill just at the right temperature. Maybe a little schwash or schwasher of a, like a, uh, I don't know, a grapefruit peel like this. And uh, that would be a good drink right there. Um, let's add some citrus to this and see if we can, you know, liven the party up here. I got a little lemon since there's a lemon verbena in there. Verbena and some of that. Holy, uh, <laughs> basil, holy basil, yeah. Ooh, there's some orange that's just going all over, but not in the cup. I think what I'm going to do is actually, whew, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been dunking the old fruit skins in there, and it's damn fine. Okay, so here's some lime, of course, Persian, the originator. You know what? Now I'm gonna get to that point where I gotta ship this a little bit. Hmm. Okay. I take back the G and T thing. As long as you got citrus for this, you're gonna have a really nice gin and tonic. And you know me, I gotta do all four. I mean, shit. Okay, well, that is a cocktail amongst cocktails right there. Um, the citrus has livened the party up. It has, it has brought the quinine of the fever tree up. Bitter is now in a neutral zone. Uh, you know... But I still would stick to cocktails designed for wine barreled aged gins. Like I said before, the sherry, sherry cast, it looks almost identical. Um, the aged gin old fashioned, which is a great cocktail, and the Alexandria. And if you don't know the Alexandria, you should look it up because those are two uh, cocktails that I think this would be phenomenal in. Um... Well, okay, so the last little bit of thing, a little bit of thing here is, uh, <laughs> the retail price. Now, it's from anywhere from $25, which really isn't that bad, to 40 bucks. I can't believe that gap, but, um, I, you know, honestly, I don't remember really where I got this one from. It could have been down the street, it could have been in Nashville, it could have been gifted. I don't really remember, and I'm sorry for saying that the way I am, but I'm being honest. It's um, it's something that you see in your liquor store, and you are a novice gin head. I, I, I would say pick it up, because you need to try this. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not... It's it's perfect. It's, it's, it's middle of the road. That's all I can say. Middle of the road. Delicious in a GNT here. I mean, it was okay. Neat. You had to do it neat just to extract the, the, the grapey, oaky, smoky, botanic. Five botanicals? Wait, is it? Is it five? I think it was five botanicals. That's not that many. What do we got here? We got the holy basil, right? We got the juniper, right? Of course. And then we got the lemon premium. And then we got rosemary. So that's four. Four botanicals. That's not very many. Not very much. But at the same time, it's doing a lot here in the old palette maker. Damn. Well, like always, uh, from uh, me to you, to you to me, to everyone else out there in Middle Tennessee, I, I wish you a fine evening, a good morning, and an afternoon as well. Enjoy gin, and uh, pick this up if you want. I think you should. Anyway, uh, salute, man. Eh?
Ciao, Bella, and uh, bye.